everyone and welcome to another episode of Bar. In today's video we are going to talk about AWS Lex. Lex is a conversational bot service from AWS. We will create our first basic bot. We will configure it with Slack so you can have a conversational bot in Slack. This is the first episode in many series of Lex so Subscribe to my channel to know when the next Lex episodes are coming out. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! As I said, this is the first video on a Lex series. In the first introductionary video, I will share a little bit what is a conversational bot and what are the different parts of Lex. And we will also set it up with a Slack so we can chat with our box. So what is AWS Lex? Lex is a service that AWS created some few months ago that allow us to have conversational bots. So we can create conversational bot, meaning that we can chat with the bot either by text or by speak and Lex understands and it can reply. Let's talk a little bit about what is the structure of an AWS Lex bot. So a bot is a collection of intents. Intents is what the human like the wants to do. So for example, if you have a um, holiday bot that books things for you, you will have different intents. You will have one that is to book your trip, your plane flights. You will have another one that is to rent a hotel, to book a hotel, and you will have another one that is to rent a car. So there are different three intents in this bot. So one bot can have as many intents as you want, from one to as many as you need. Intent has many utterances. Utterances are different phrases that invoke the intent. So intent has utterances. There are different phrases that will invoke the intent. So for example, if you want to order a drink, sometimes you will say, hey, I would like to order a drink, or I would like to have a drink, or I want a beer. Things like that will trigger the same intent. But how the machine learning will learn that I want a beer and I would like to order a drink are the same things. Sometimes you need to write these utterances, these more or less different ways that the intent can be triggered. And then the machine learning will learn similar things that are in the middle. So you might want to put, I would like to have a drink and I want a beer. And then maybe the bot will know that I want a drink something that also will trigger that so it will learn the one in the middle so that's something you need to learn to play with the other thing that there are in the aws lex bots is a slots a slots are the data that the user must provide to fulfill this intent so for example if you want to order a drink a slot is what drink you need to know what drink you want to order so that's kind of a variable in the context so if the conversation starts i want a beer that's all that's all the bot ordering, uh, getting your order needs, but if you say, I want a drink, then the bot needs to ask you, what kind of drink? So then you say, I want a beer. So that's kind of a slot. Also there are required slots and not required slots. So for example, if you say, I want a beer, you will get by default the normal size beer. But if you say, I want half a pint, then you will get half a pint beer. So that's also something you need to know. The size may not be a required slot or a required variable in order to, to fulfill your order. You can go always with the default, normal. Then for slots, we have this thing called prompts. Prompts are the questions that the bot will ask the user uh, to, fill, to fill these slots. So for example, if we have the intent to order a drink and we start with the the utterance will be from the user, I want a drink, then a prompt will need to come, what kind of drink? So then we can fulfill uh, fill the slot. But if the utterance is, I want a beer, this prompt will never appear because you know what kind of drink. So the bot is smart and already knows that you have the beer to fill that slot. And that's all he needs. So that's something also you need to understand. And the last bit is the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is a bit less logic to fulfill this request. So AWS legs don't go with fulfillment. You need to attach an AWS Lambda, and that we will do in the next uh, episode, to fulfill the order. So if you want to order a drink, 
what AWS Lex can do is pass by that information to the Lambda. So the user doesn't need to type or fill a form, it just can talk to about I want a beer and the AWS Lex will grab the beer, the user information and pass it to the Lambda to fulfill that user request. So more or less those are the different parts of this uh, AWS Lex and what we will be building. So also when you're working with Lex bots, you have to understand that there are some concepts. For example, uh, each intent and prompt and bot has versions and aliases. So whenever time you save an intent and build, I will explain what is that, uh, you create a new version. So because then you can have your history on how the changes are progressing so if these bots are live somewhere else the users don't see the changes dramatically so unless you want them to see so you can save and that doesn't cost like uh, trigger any anything so you are working on something and you save that's totally fine then there is another button build when you press build and you build that bot uh, a new version of that bot will be generated and you can test it. So if you just save, you cannot test your changes. You need to build in order to test your changes. And then you can try your bot. And if you are sure that that's what you want, you can publish your bot. When you publish your bot, you will get a new version of the bot. And when the bot is published, then you can put it in Slack, Twilio, or Facebook, and maybe new channels that come soon. Also, you can attach it to a mobile app. So now we are going to build our first simple bot and navigate a little bit the console so you understand what is what and where, how all these things work. And also, we will configure this in Slack, so then you will have your bot. So the first thing we need to do to get Lex, you need an AWS account. If you don't have one, you should get one. Then when you have everything set up, go to the AWS console and let's get started with Lex. So look for Lex. You need to be uh, in Virginia. It's the only, where, the only region where Lex is available. So now I'm trying it with uh, Ireland and it will tell me nope. So just go to Virginia and then you will be able to see Lex. And here are my bots and this is how Lex looks. So you have in the left side you have Lex, bots, intents and slot types because you can reutilize your intents and slot types in different bots. And then we have here my bots that I have created and we will create a new one. When you create a new box it uh, offers you to try a sample so you can book a trip, order flowers or schedule an appointment or you can create a custom bot. We are going to create a custom bot. And when you create a custom bot you need to give it a name, a voice because it can talk. The voices are pretty funny, so in this case it's going to be a chatbot with uh, text, so I will just pick any bo voice. Chai is the right. And then we put the session timeout, that means when uh, Lex forget about the user that is writing. And as we are not going to do a bot for kids, then we click no. And the role is already set up for us, so that's good. We create. And then we have here uh, all the explanation that I gave you five minutes ago. That is what is intense, utterance, slots, slots, prompts and fulfillment. So you can read it there if you're interested in knowing what is what. So remember, intense is what you want the user to do. In this case, we want to order coffee. Utterances will be like the different things that the user wants to say. So I would like to get a drink or I would like to order coffee or things like that. Slots in this case is coffee, coffee drinks. Prompts is the questions that the computer will ask to the user, what kind of coffee, for example, and fulfillment is to order the coffee in real life. So let's create our first intent. We create a new intent and we call it a coffee order. And now we put our utterances. I would like to order a coffee, for example. And then we have another one. I would like to order and I would like to have a, a drink. So those are our utterances and then we are creating our slots. Uh, AWS has some uh, slots by default but I could not find how these uh, slots are defined so here I'm just trying with one drink and I save it and now we can build so we can try this bot as I said you save and build to try it takes a little while to, to build so don't worry after it's built we can try it we can write I would like to order a drink or a coffee and then it has coffee null. Why? 
because our slot is not a required one so we just don't need to get a specific the coffee so if we put the required on and then also we can define these parameters so if you say i would like to order a cappuccino then it will know that that's the cappuccino there and and it's the slot fulfilling so that's also something we can use and these utterances don't need to be exact so if i write i would like to order a coffee or an espresso it will know it doesn't need to match one to one so we build again and we try now i would like to order a coffee what kind of coffee cappuccino and that mm, is ready for fulfillment that's the end of the action and then we can say i would like to order an espresso kind of coffee it doesn't understand that that's a coffee and that's the thing that uh, i don't understand from this amazon uh, drink slots that they are not definition of what is a drink i want to create my own slots so i know what is inside the drinks and what drinks i accept so i will put here coffee types and i will define what coffee is my coffee bar accepts for example we have things like cappuccino an espresso an americano and latte like basic coffees and then when you create this you can save and then you're done and now it put it automatically there so we can remove the first that it was the with the amazon drinks and we just change the name to coffee and we ask the right prompt also the prompts you can have multiple prompts for the same filling the same slot so it doesn't become boring so if you click there in the gear you can define multiple prompts for the same for the same thing so now we can build we can try i would like to order a coffee and coffee null because we forgot again the required yay i would like to order an espresso and it just fulfills that so that's good so now we can try a little bit more here we always need to go to the latest of the version so don't forget that mark that as required and then we create a confirmation prompt and that will appear whenever the before the order is fulfilled so we are asking the user are you sure you want to order a coffee so the user confirmed the the thing and then you have the cancel so if the user says no the order won't be placed and we will let the user know that and you also can create different uh, prompts for that so the conversation doesn't look robotic and it's not boring okay don't worry for example and then here uh, you can also verify this is only available in english yet but i imagine that they will do this in many languages i don't know how it will be but yeah let's see so now our bot is saved we have uh, need to build it and after that we can test it now we can try the bot it requires a lot of building these things so sometimes it's a little slow when you're starting out that you forget something and you want to try it and you need to build it and and it's pretty slow oh, that's how it goes i think it comes faster the more you master this thing so we'll ask things to lex i would like to order a coffee and then what kind of coffee an americano and then it will ask you are you sure you want to order americano yep okay and then we will say i would like to order an americano we start on a new request an americano is coming up so you see it's a different uh confirmation thing nope and it doesn't understand nope so you need to say no okay your order won't be placed those are the two paths and now what we want to do is we are going to publish this bot so when we publish the bot what will happen is that it will be available for using outside of aws console so we just put an alias to it and we just publish it so meaning that we can uh, uh, attach it with slack or facebook messenger or twilio so you can text message to it or or other ways of communicating at least for now they have these three and also you can add it to your to your mobile application as well so there are different channels so as soon as it finish you go to channels and then you can start uh, doing your integration so first you need to have a slack channel we have created a slack channel many times for different videos so you can do the same and then when you have your slack channel you just go to your integrations and you will build and create a new app 
I don't know why, but the steps here seems to be very important, the order, because I did this in different steps, in different ways before, and sometimes I get the bot working, sometimes I don't, so I recommend you to follow the steps as closely as possible as you can. We create a new Slack app, create a new, and then we put a name, make a V order bot, and we pick a channel, the one that we just created, for example, our test channel, and then you have this app, the first thing we are going to do is to create a new bot, we add a user and then we put it always online. Now we go to interactive messages and we enable it and then it will ask you for a request URL, we just put any URL, we will change this in a moment. So when that's that ready, we can go to basic information and we will get all the parameters that we need in order to continue this. The first thing we need to do is in our uh, Amazon Lex. We need to start defining our integration. So we go to Slack uh, channel and then we start setting up what is the name, the description, and the alias that we just created. The client ID is the Slack client ID that we got. So you can copy paste it. Then the secret token is that one. We just can copy paste it. And the verification token is that one, and we can copy paste it once. Make sure that you're copy pasting the right things in the right place because these you cannot edit after they are done. You need to basically remove them and start again. So after you activate, then you can see there two URLs, the postback URL and the auth URL. We will need these URLs now. So the first thing we are going to do after we have those URLs is to go to the OAuth and permissions and then we will add the redirect URL, that is that OAuth URL that we have in our Lex. We add it and then we save and then we add some permissions to this bot, a one that the bot can be able to write, basically sending messages as this bot and then we want to be able to read the information of your team. Then after that we go back to the interactive messages and we change that request URL for the postback URL and now we can save. Then we go to event subscriptions and we enable that so our app can be notified when there are new events and we put that post uh, URL, postback URL and then we also subscribe to the messages that we want basically to the history of the direct messages so you will only be able to communicate with your bot through direct messages so if you want the bot to respond in, in the channel then you will need to give permissions for that after all that is set up, everything is safe, then you go to manage your distribution, share your app with your team and you and click that button add to Slack and now it will ask you for permissions. Go to the direct messages of your bot and you can start talking with it. Coffee order bot. You can also personalize the bot logo and things like that, but we won't go into there. I would like to order a coffee. What kind of coffee? An Americano. Americano coming up, is that correct? Yes. Good. I would like to order an espresso. An espresso coming up, is that correct? Nope. Okay, don't worry. And you see that that's the flow of our bot. In the next episode, we are going to work a little bit with AWS Lambda and this bot. So if you don't know what AWS Lambda is and you would like to get started, you can follow this playlist that I leave you a lot of information on how to use Lambdas. So that was the video for today. I hope you like it. And in the next episode, we will be using an AWS Lambda to do something with this bot, so stay tuned. If you like this video, just give it a big thumbs up and leave any comment, questions or whatever you want to know in the comment box below so I can give content that you are interested in watching. And around here, as always, you can find some videos that YouTube is suggesting from my channel to you that you might be interested, so maybe you can go and give it a go. And I see you in the next episode of Uvar. Ciao!